Hi, I'm Brad Ritchie with the sport team here at QA Cafe. Here's how to create a simple configuration to get started with your testing. Now remember, CD Router is an automated test platform. It works by completely surrounding your device on both the WAN and LAN sides, so it thinks that it's actually deployed on a real network. In this example, you can see we have the ETH2 interface connected to the WAN side of the device and ETH1 connected to the LAN side. So when you go into CD Router, go over to the Configurations tab. This is where all the configurations are kept. And when you create a new configuration, CD Router is going to automatically fill in a template with all the configuration settings. So at the top, we'll fill in the configuration name. And then you can fill in a description and notes, tags. And then at the bottom, you'll find all of the settings that completely control all of CD Router's features, protocols, addressing, everything that you can configure in CD Router is shown here in the bottom section of the config editor. It's all organized by the different add-on expansions. The base configuration section has all of your IPv4 settings, and it also has some global settings that control, uh, that control all of the other ex add-on expansions. In the base configuration section, as you expand them, there's subsections. These go down until you finally reach the individual settings. So here you can see the first thing you'll notice is that all of them are commented out. That's just as if they weren't there in the config file at all. So whenever a CD router needs one of these settings, it's going to use a default value if it doesn't find it. In this way, CD router's default template has everything commented out, so you only need to enable what you want to change from its default value. So going back to our diagram, we have ETH2 on the WAN, ETH1 on the LAN. We're going to go into the WAN interfaces section, and you can see the top setting here. We call these test vars. The top one is the WAN interface. This tells CD router which interface is connected to the WAN side of the device. When I click on it, you'll see there's help text that appears to the right-hand side. This explains what that test var does. It also shows you any uh, available values for it, as well as its default value. Or in this case, the WAN interface defaults to ETH2. So if you don't define this explicitly, CD router is going to assume that your device is attached to, to ETH2. If your device is attached to a different interface, simply uncomment the test var and change it to the name of one of your other interfaces, ETH3, for example. Now I'm going to go over to a simplified configuration setting. In this example, I've taken out almost all of the other test vars and only left in the essential ones that you need for basic setup. Now our default template has all of the test vars set to what we reasonably think most devices will need. So in most cases, you don't even need to set all of these test vars, but what I've included here are the test vars that you really need to focus on when you're getting a new device set up or if you're brand new to using CD router. So here we have the base configuration section, the WAN, the WAN interface section, and that's where we're going to start. So we have our WAN interface. Next, we have the WAN mode. The WAN mode tells CD router how your device gets its address. Now, by default, most devices at their factory defaults will use DHCP to get an address. So that's what CD router has it as its default value. Now, many devices will use PPPoE instead. So that's also available for CD router. And if you change it, CD router will now know that it needs to start up a PPPoE server instead of a DHCP server. Whatever the WAN mode is said to, that's what CD router is going to use to initialize its servers. In addition to DHCP and PPPoE, you can see the other available values. There's PPTP and L2TP. Those are older protocols that tunnel IPv4 within IPv4. And then there's a number of IPv6 only WAN modes like DS Lite, MAP E, MAP T, and Lightweight 4 over 6. All of those modes tell CD router that the device is going to tunnel any IPv4 LAN traffic within IPv6. There's no IPv4 natively on the WAN interface. If you have a device that's operating in one of those modes, you just select that from the list, uh, from the values here, and CD router will enable that mode. 
Next is the ISP IP setting. This is going to be CD Router's interface address on the WAN. Going back to our diagram, we can see ETH2 connected to the WAN side. It's going to assign the WAN ISP IP to its ETH2 interface. That is also going to be the address of CD Router's DHCP server or its PPPoE server, depending on the WAN mode. And if you're running DHCP, it's going to be the default gateway address that is assigned to your device. So if your device needs to reach any addresses that are remote and not on the, and not on the same link, it's going to use that address as its default gateway. Next is the WAN ISP assign IP. That's the address that CD router assigns to your device, either through DHCP or PPPoE. Uh, you may also test a device that's statically configured ahead of time. So if you have your device pre-configured on the network, you would use these settings to tell CD router what your device has been configured as. Next is the WAN ISP mask and the domain name, and then the forwarding mode. The forwarding mode, when set to route, that tells CD router that your device is a typical NAT gateway. It's going to translate private addresses from the LAN side into a public address on the WAN. If you set this to bridge instead, that tells CD router that your device is actually forwarding traffic directly from the LAN to the WAN without doing any routing at all. And so CD router knows that any LAN clients that it creates are going to have to get it, their DHCP addresses from CD router's own DHCP server. Now, in this example, we've changed the WAN mode to PPPoE, and so we need to set the authentication settings. Those are in the PPPoE server section. Here we have the username and password. Also, an access concentrator name and service name can be configured if your device needs those. Now, by default, CD Router always creates two DNS servers, and you can configure their addresses there. Now, all of CD Router's servers will exist in a virtual space within CD Router. Once again, we go to our diagram. Each of these interfaces that are connected to your device are completely isolated from each, from each other. So all of CD Router's servers exist within CD Router and the interfaces don't forward any traffic between them. They don't forward any traffic externally. The servers reside in a virtual address space that is not on the interface link itself. So in our config file, we need to make sure that these addresses are not in the same IP subnet with the WAN ISP IP and the assign IP that is assigned to CD router and your device. And then lastly, many devices will send traffic over a VLAN. They might have different services on different VLANs, such as uh, data and voice and video being on different VLANs. Management might be on a third VLAN. So if you need to configure VLANs, there's an 8021Q VLAN section. You can expand that and uncomment the, van, the WAN VLAN ID to assign that VLAN to your device. And then CD router will know to only process packets that come in on that VLAN. Next, we have the LAN section. Similar to the WAN section, there's a LAN interface that tells CD router what interface is connected to the LAN side of your device. This defaults to ETH1. In this example, I've changed it to WLAN1. So that's one of the Wi-Fi interfaces that are on your device. The LAN mode is how CD Router's LAN clients that it creates will get their address. Typically, that's from the CPE device's own DHCP server, but this can be set to static, in which case CD Router will automatically assign a, an IP address to its own clients. LAN clients defines the number of virtual clients you want on that interface. This requires the multi-port add-on expansion in order to configure more than one client on an interface. You can increase this to virtually any number on Ethernet. There is a 512 client limit for the entire system, more than enough for any LAN uh, side of your device. For Wi-Fi interfaces, this is limited based on the hardware that you have. Here we've configured 64 virtual clients on our Wi-Fi interface. Next is LAN security. The default value for this is none, which in a Wi-Fi interface means that it's an open network and that there's no security or authentication required. We've changed this to WPA, which tells CD router that its LAN clients will try to authenticate using WPA. Uh, if they're not successful, 
the testing won't get started. You can also configure this to 8021X or WEP. LAN IP is the IP address of your device as well as its LAN mask. In the DHCP client section, this defines the DHCP address pool that your device is going to be using. So you'll have to check the settings of your device to find out what the IP address range is that it's going to use uh, when assigning address to clients and make sure that these test VARs match that range. Now, that's all you need to configure a basic setup to have one interface connected to CD Router's LAN side and one interface on the WAN. Now, once you're done with all of your configuration, up at the top of the page, there's a check config button. This will catch any syntax errors, uh, such as using the wrong keyword or mistyping an IP address that's invalid. Uh, any of those will be caught by the config checker so that you find them while you're editing your configuration and not while you're trying to run your tests. Once you're happy with your config, click save and it gets saved into the list of config files. You can then add it to one of your test packages and run your tests.